Hey guys, welcome to Chef Grace's Place. So before we get started, today I have a really special guest. His name is Mike Akers or Agers. Akers, yeah, that's correct. Uh, but he's really known as Mr. Cast Iron. Yeah. <laughs> before we get started with that, uh, I have a couple of announcements. Um, as some of you might know, I started selling some of the baked goods that I make on the channel uh, in person at Farmer's Market in Riviera Beach, Florida. It's called the Tiki Market, and it's located at the Riviera Beach Marina. And also, this Saturday, you can take a free online virtual class. It's going to be my first one. I'm going to try to start doing that. So I'll have a link below for that. And that's going to be about cinnamon buns. And there's one more thing that I was supposed to say. I forgot. <laughs> so, uh, cinnamon buns, market. Oh, and also, um, which I'm inviting you to do this too, if you want, because I just watched your um, your Frito pie video. Uh, we're, I'm doing a uh, Nacho Bowl <coughs> challenge. The hashtag is hashtag Nacho Bowl 2021. So if you participate, um, the winner's going to, I'm going to interview the winner. That's really, you know, <laughs> that's the grand prize. <laughs> okay. But, uh, <laughs> um you know it's been pretty fun so far and there's a playlist going with all the videos and stuff so it's just fun to be a part of <clears throat> cool all right so mr cast iron yes indeed how are you chef grace i'm doing pretty well um i see it doing? looks like you're in the kitchen and i'm in the man cave you see <laughs> Well, my kitchen is also my living room. Yeah, so. I understand. <laughs> so it kind of just works like that. Um, so I was introduced to Mr. Cast Iron through Karen, who has her own uh, cooking channel. She should be on the channel pretty soon. And um, I really just love the, uh, the community feel of your channel. Mr. Cast Iron does... Um, Cooking similar to me, he does cooking videos, but he does live interviews, which I think is cool because then you get the questions going in the chat to ask the person you're interviewing and stuff, which is pretty cool. So, how did you get started with your channel and the idea for the interviews and stuff like that? Well, uh, to get started on my channel, I have had a few other channels prior to Mr. Cast Iron, and uh, for various reasons, I ended up having to shut those down. Well, one of them I still have, but I, it's not that active. And uh, let's Are see. Are they all I'll, cooking? Or they no, were they, were, they were different things. Some of them were uh, having to do with multi-level marketing uh, products and different things like that. And some of them were just... Uh, just for fun. So we never really pushed those out. Um, August of 2019, I had some health issues that come up to uh, have to have attention to, and that kind of changed my lifestyle. And that's how I ended up starting this particular channel. And it initially started out as a keto type channel. And I still have a few videos uh, older videos on my channel that were keto type. And matter of fact, when, when you watch one, it'll open up and say, welcome to keto style. That was the name of it. And so I just kept those, uh, those videos. I didn't want to delete them. And, uh, but I have a real good friend down in Florida and I understand you're down that way. Aren't you? Is that yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I'm a transplant, but I'm yeah. here in South Florida. <laughs> he, uh, we, we stay in touch quite a bit and, uh, he called me one day and I wasn't able to catch the phone call and he left me a message and uh, he knew I loved to cook and cast iron. And uh, matter of fact, I had a website that uh, we had worked on together a little bit. And uh, so when he called, he said, uh, when, when he didn't get me, he was leaving a message. He said, uh, uh, Hey, skillet head, Mr. Cast Iron, what are you doing? Now you're screening your calls, aren't you? Big time there, he said. <laughs> and it just resonated with me when he said that. I thought, you know, I told my wife, Teresa, I said, you know, that's it. I said, I've been wondering what direction really to go with this channel. And I knew keto being kind of a fad diet in a sense, in a way. Uh, I thought maybe, you know, it may be up and down. It may not be that, uh, you know, great way, great of a way to go. So when he said that, I said, you know, I've got my, I've got my website. 
MrCastIron.com now. I've changed the, the name to it. And I said, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in that direction. And so that's that's how we ended up with Mr. Cast Iron. That's awesome. Because I feel like, you know, even if people only see one video, like everyone, I feel like everyone who starts cooking once in their life Googles how to clean a cast iron skillet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So you got, you know, you got some evergreen content that's like, hopefully you come up in the search for it, but, you know, you got at least one, but. I don't actually have a cast iron skillet right now. I used to have oh. one. I found my mom's house. I'm going to steal it back from her. <laughs> yeah, I love cast iron. It's so versatile. Uh, and like you say, you know, a lot of people, they're really concerned about cleaning. And they're not as hard to clean as you would think. And I've got, I don't know, two or three videos about cleaning cast iron and reseasoning. And it's not as hard as, you know, I think people just, they just have this fear about it. But once you learn the basics, I mean, it's real easy to, to maintain a skillet or a Dutch oven. I saw that you uh, <laughs> season yours with bacon grease. <laughs> I do. You know, I'm a country boy. I live here in northeast Arkansas, and uh, I was born and raised in southeast Missouri, a little small town, Kennett, Missouri. And uh, we were raised on cast iron and bacon <laughs> and bacon grease. You know, mom <laughs> used uh, – she cooked uh, – in her skillet all the time. And that's where I learned to cook and cast iron. And uh, of course, certainly uh, the bacon or lard they even used back in those days, you know, a lot. And lard is just, uh, it's just rendered pork fat. And so that's the same as bacon grease. And uh, uh, so it just, it just does real well on cast iron. It keeps them in the shape they need to be in. Sounds that great for your arteries though. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you could say the same thing about hydrogenated vegetable oil. So yeah. I'd rather eat bacon grease than that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you buy a new skillet from Lodge, uh, Lodge is one of the bigger name, I guess, name brands. They come pre seasoned with, from uh, Lodge with uh, vegetable oil. So. But I've always had the best use out of bacon grease. It's just, it's always done me good. And that's what mom did. And that's just something that I've continued to do on all mine. And, and uh, I get, you know, comments both ways from folks. So. I mean, so, I love, I always say my, I have like a, uh, like a coffee mug. So every time I'm done cooking bacon, like I pour off the grease and save it for later. Yeah. You know, and it's great flavoring. I mean, you can use bacon grease uh, to flavor all kinds of dishes. And, well, it's uh, great for browning too, because it has such a low <clears throat> smoke point. Yeah. So if you're using like vegetable oil, which has a higher smoke point, it's not going to brown as quickly as the bacon grease. Like my quesadillas, I always use bacon grease because you don't get that nice, like crispy texture on the outside yeah. if you use vegetable oil. Yeah. If, if I had really been thinking about this interview and, and uh, uh, I could have brought a can, it's an old, it looks, it looks like a coffee can that has a handle on it and it has a, a sieve or a screen on top of it. And you can pour your hot bacon grease out of the skillet and it will filter out any bacon bits, you know, that may be burnt or whatever. And then the grease, filters down into the can and that was my mother's and so i, I have that of course i actually my mother. saw that on your video it actually it looks like a um a percolator yeah like the ones you yeah. to make coffee in yeah so that, that was cool at first that's what i thought it was and i saw you pour it off and i was like oh i see what yeah. he's doing there i was like that's cool yeah i save not all of my grease but i save a lot and like i said that's that's basically how i season everything even outside like if i'm cooking on a fire pit uh you know with a dutch oven or something once i clean them up uh i basically season them with bacon grease how many pounds of bacon do you go through in a month oh in a month probably mm, two to five maybe two to five all right that's a lower number than i thought you were gonna say yeah. well <laughs> yeah i don't i mean i love it i i, I can eat it every day but you know, five pounds of bacon. That's a lot of bacon, really. Yeah, that's more than one pound a week, actually. Yeah, if you're only eating like a couple slices, you know, of a morning or something with your breakfast. And, 
you know, five pound goes a long ways. But, so you said you're in Arkansas. Actually, one of my favorite um, gardening channels is in Arkansas. It's called uh, Roots and Refuge Farm. Have you heard of it? Uh, no, I don't think I've heard of that one. Uh, possibly now. Are they down like north of Little Rock somewhere? Or do you know? I have no idea. I just know Arkansas. And also, I mean, she's always talking about how rocky their soil is. So maybe... <laughs> Sure, yeah. Little Rock is called Little Rock for more than one reason, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Small pebble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not familiar with that. I'll have to I'll have to write that down. What was that again? It's a Roots and Refuge Farm. Roots and Refuge. Okay. It's kind of like a vlog, but you know, they do gardening stuff too garden tour yeah. stuff like that yeah 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 i get into things like that i i before i took the job that i have now i i raised a garden a lot and i don't do it as much anymore and i'm getting older it's, it, that's a lot of work really i mean it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of benefit to raising your own uh, produce but Gosh, it's hard. The older you get, and it's harder to get out on your knees and get back. It's not hard to get down. <laughs> it's the getting back up, you know, that can be a problem. <laughs> I mean, my patio right now is just covered in plants. Like, I have to give some of them away because it's too yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, I just had my first uh, snow pea today from the garden, which is mm. pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. You raise herbs and stuff like that on your patio? Yeah, because it's a... Um, <clears throat> super cost effective and yeah. now that i'm selling at the market like all the herbs and stuff that i use in the stuff i'm selling comes straight from my garden and it lowers my costs like yeah a lot yeah that's cool so that's cool a tension tension tube is your heart no huh the tension tube that's your heart i didn't understand the tension, you were saying you had the health problem with the tension tubes? So oh, heart. oh, oh, no, it wasn't my heart. No, I had, uh, uh, my family has had uh, a history of pancreatic, uh, well, I had a brother that passed away from uh -huh. pancreatic cancer and a nephew, and I had an attack, and uh, it was just a matter of changing my diet, really, and so we did that and that's kind of how I got started on keto and just cutting out the white flowers and, you know, the white vegetables and things like that and kind of eating a little more. when you make french fries. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, I can't say that I stuck with it now. <laughs> I do. That's the problem. But, you know, it's a battle. I mean, that that's really a battle. And, of course, my wife, she's type 2 diabetic, so we have to really – I mean, like when I make those French fries and bacon grease, like that video you're probably talking about, I, you know, it's something that she's not able to participate with me a lot of times. I, I try to oh, be not tortured tempt her. Because it would smell <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes, it does. And I just love fried taters. I, I grew up that way, you know, and uh, it's hard to get away from, you know, and that kind of food's so tasty and it's just hard to get away. It's just, you got to make a lifestyle change. And I mean, we, we, you know, we fall off the wagon occasionally, but we have to try to stick to uh, a little better eating habits for her, you know? And I don't know if you caught some of my other live streams that I did, uh, especially back around Christmas. Um, she and I both contracted COVID. I, I got it first and brought it home and, and uh, she got it later. I was hoping and praying she wouldn't get it, but she did being diabetic and everything. I was really worried about that, but it affected me. I mean, it was, uh, I'm fairly healthy. I, I've very rarely been to a doctor or been to the hospital or anything, uh, you know, for sickness. Now I've been, I, I had a wreck and messed my eye up, a motorcycle wreck years ago, but as far as other health, I'm pretty healthy. And this really kicked my butt. I'm just, you know, it affects people differently, but I'm going to tell you, it really rocked my world. And then when she got it, being a diabetic and everything, she had, 
several other issues that I are, uh, you know, symptoms and, and, and things that I didn't have. And uh, it's just the weirdest thing. And I, I hope no one else gets it. And, well, uh, I mean, we had, uh, I don't know if you've seen how many videos of mine you've seen. I tell this story a lot, but um, yeah, I was working as a flight attendant before the pandemic and I had just come back from Thailand and they weren't um, like, they weren't, they didn't have anything set up to test for it really yet, even though it was such, it was so like traveling the world. It was apparent, like, why isn't the US like acknowledging this? Like it was like yeah. really weird. And um, so when I came back from my last trip from, and I was from Thailand, which at the time was had the second most amount of cases, um, I, I didn't feel that great. Like I was sick for like a week maybe. Mm. And I was trying to get tested and stuff and I never got any answers. Um, but then last week, my boyfriend didn't feel good. <laughs> and then he tested positive. Um, but he was like, he works a lot. Um, so he, he that day he worked like, you know, like 19 hours, like something crazy. So he was like, oh, I'm just exhausted. Right. You know, I'm not sick. And then, um, you know, I'm cooking and stuff. And he goes to eat dinner and he's like, I can't taste this. You can't taste it. <laughs> so that's when he was like, all right, I got to go get tested before yeah. I go back to work. Um, and he tested positive and I tested negative. Um, but then we both quarantined for, uh, you know, like the two week period just to make sure right. we didn't give it to anyone else. Because, right. I mean, we live in a small like an apartment complex but we're you know we, we have friends that are, like one of our neighbors just had a baby like we don't want to be by them like our right. other neighbors take care of like elderly people so it was very hard to like isolate yourself and like yeah. not <clears throat> did know. he catch it at work or something from a we're not we're not sure um there's a lot of people at work but we you know we were also the day he, he was like really tired and didn't really feel well, uh, we were at the market too. So like it was most likely work because he was already not feeling well by the time he got to the market. He just felt like he was, he just thought he was tired. Yeah. Um, so, well, I caught mine yeah. at work. I, I caught it from a fellow employee and um, I just started having a headache and it just gradually got worse. And then, uh, that was on a Friday or let's see. Yeah, it was on a Friday. And by the time we, uh, we were done with the, the day getting ready to go home. I mean, I had just a, a massive killer headache and I very rarely ever get a headache. And so I knew something was up and I told my boss, which happens to be my nephew, by the way, I said, I said, if I don't feel better in the morning, I said, I'll text you and let you know. I said, but I may have to go get tested. And uh, then it come to find out uh, one of my best friends that work with us, uh, him and his wife contracted it and they, they tested positive. So I knew, you know, I was working around him all day long. I mean, real in, in close quarters. <laughs> and so. What Saturday, do you do for work? Uh, now I work for Helena Chemical, which we deliver uh, fertilizer and, and chemicals to farmers. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. So you got, got you show a garden, you probably got free fertilizer. Well, I know, but the th <laughs> that's the thing, you know, when, when it's time to raise a garden and put a lot of time and effort into your own personal <laughs> garden, we're out helping farmers to get their crops in. So we don't have time, you know, and. So that, that's what happened. That's kind of why I quit raising a garden because I just don't have time during the, the prime time to raise a garden. What was your favorite thing to grow when you had it? Oh, I, I raised everything and canned a lot. You know, I put a lot of tomatoes up, stewed tomatoes and, and uh, green beans and beets and, oh gosh, just uh, peppers. I'm, I love peppers. Uh, jalapeno, cayenne, bell pepper, um, just love that stuff. And I'd raise peas, uh, black eyed peas, purple hull peas, uh, greens. I, I'm, I'm a big green eater. I love turnip greens, mustard greens, collard greens, um, you name it, cabbage. 
that kind of stuff is right down my alley. You got a little soul in me, I guess, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to grow a Brussels sprout, a Brussels sprout plant, but I don't think it's going to work out on yeah. my porch. <laughs> yeah. But. Needs cold weather, and you're probably a little warmer down there than. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, zone 10B, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's gonna. I should probably just put something else there. But you do patio tomatoes and things like that. Yeah, I actually took um, like maybe like I probably have like five. Let's see, one, two, uh, four. Um, like storage bins that I converted into like fake raised beds, basically. Yeah. Um, so I'm. I mean, last year I was my first time like gardening in florida too um so i started the tomato plants like really late <laughs> but they yeah. got really big i just never got any tomatoes because mm -hmm. it was too hot so in, this year i'm doing a variety that should do well here and i started way earlier so hopefully i get some tomatoes <laughs> yeah. yeah i've done some container gardening uh i think the most success i had was uh uh, developing a self-watering system for it. So you may, you may consider that, may look into that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about it. Uh, you can take a container and cut a hole in it and put a softening tube in it. And, and uh, the, the roots of the plant will draw the moisture as it needs it. And it's, it's pretty awesome. You have to look into that. Cause right now I'm, uh, I got two milk jugs. I just walk back and forth. Like, <laughs> every day you know trying to fill them up but uh that would that would be nice <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty cool and if i had the time you know i would do a lot more i've got a pretty good piece of ground beside our house here yeah, well it's a complete lot and at one time i had the whole lot in the garden but i just don't have time to do that anymore do you guys do um the fertilizer stuff is that like all organic and whatnot uh for the farmers no no now I, my garden i was all organic i compost and do all kinds of things like that uh i didn't i didn't use chemical fertilize fertilizer <laughs> but um yeah. so how back to the youtube channel how did you get started with the interview part of it uh, well, that's interesting. Um, I had another YouTuber named Pete Thomas. I don't know if you're familiar with Pete. He's from uh, England, actually Wales. And uh, he's got a cooking channel, cooking show. And that, that's just the name of it. He calls himself the lazy cook. And I argue that with him because he, he's so detailed in his dishes. He's certainly not lazy. And but anyway, his slogan or tagline is the lazy cook. But you may look him up. Oh, Pete Thomas. He's really, an, really a good guy. But Pete was interviewing some other folks that I'm subscribed to. And I happened to catch one of his shows. And uh, at the end of his show, he said, if anyone would like to, uh, you know, come on and, and be interviewed, just shoot me an email. So I did I, immediately because I have done some interviews before uh, with other people in you know, the other channel I was talking about through basically multi-level marketing uh, products and products. And so I've had some interviews with people or I've actually interviewed other people. Let me put it that way. And so this was something that I was kind of kicking around thinking about doing anyway. And so when I went on his show, we talked a little bit about that and it was just an inspiration to me. It was just kind of a, a confirmation, I guess, if you will, to go ahead and just start doing this. So I jumped out and, uh, you know, we had a great response. We had a lot of people that, uh, you know, started participating, coming in and, and it's, it's great. And so I, I started looking around at, you know, a, a format that I could use that was real easy. And I use uh, StreamYard, which is a cloud-based program. You don't have to download any software or anything. And a lot of people on YouTube are using it. And uh, it, it's great. I, I love it. I, I use it every week. I, uh, I had to uh, back down this week, starting in March, from two shows, uh, a Saturday night and a Sunday night. I've had to back down to just one now from 
uh, on Sunday night until around July the 4th because our busy season's coming up and there's a lot of Saturdays I'm working and I didn't want to take a chance on not being able to fulfill my commitment with someone on Saturday night. So I'm only scheduling people for a Sunday from now till July the 4th. And then after that, I'll probably go back to two shows a weekend because I mean, the, the people love it. And you know, it's awesome because you really get to know people. Uh, I mean, we watch everyone's videos. We love what they do, but yet we don't really get a chance to interact maybe through comments a little bit. And, you know, I, I we all try to, you know, reply to every comment we have and you kind of develop a relationship that way with your, you know, people that, uh, that are commenting on your channel or, or even subscribe, but, other cooks you're able to interview them and get to know them a little bit better some of the quirky things i mean i've got probably i don't know 100 150 questions i don't ask them all you know i kind of change it up a little bit and i let them you know i let them go and have free reign i let them go in any direction they want to go you know if we uh you know touch on a subject or ask a question if they want to elaborate and go on in any direction i mean it's great and you get to know people you get get to know things about people that you'd never dreamed, you know, and it just develops community. And that's the great thing about YouTube for me. Uh, it, it's the best social media out there. I mean, it's just so much better than all the other drama based social media sites, really, in my opinion, and because of the community. And so we, we've just carved out this niche of cooks and uh, cast iron cooks, barbecuers, bakers, you mentioned Karen. I interviewed uh, in the kitchen with Karen. She's just great. I love her. You know, me and my wife both, you know, we still stay in touch with everyone we uh, interview and we, we've just developed friendships. And I have people text me all the time and, and just checking up because they know Teresa. Uh, I didn't go into that earlier, but after the COVID, she developed blood clots in both of her lungs because of COVID. Oh, sure. And she, yeah, and she's taking blood thinners now, and we have people text us all the time. Hey, we're praying for Teresa. How's Teresa doing? Is she doing okay now? You know, and just folks that we've interviewed or folks that are in the chat room when we're when we're chatting, and you know that's the great thing too that I, I like about that is, you know, you have that live chat going on, and they're interacting amongst themselves, and so they're getting to know one another even even better too. So not just us with the interviewee. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So, and it just kind of blossomed from there. You know, I was kind of trial and error at first, you know, kind of reluctant, wasn't really hesitant, but I was just a little reluctant, you know, of what the response may be. And it was just great. I mean, it just, everybody just welcomed it. And I'd get messages, man, just, we love that. We enjoyed that. Keep doing that, whatever. So I just started reaching out to other creators and uh, I've got a pretty good list, pretty good lineup of people that are, and I, Hey, I'd love to have you on my show sometime. Love to come on. I uh, I think I've only really done. I did like one other like thing on Facebook, but uh, it'd be my first uh, YouTube interview not on my channel. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is, it's pretty awesome. And yeah. so I'll, uh, I'll have to look at my calendar. I, I, it'll be sometime in April or May now. I mean, I'm, I'm booked up sure. right at May. Yeah. So, it, and, and from now to, like I said, till July the 4th, um, it'll only be a Sunday night and I typically do it at 6 PM central time, which would be seven year time. So if that would work, I'll shoot you an email or something or something on Instagram and let you know what dates I have available and love to have you. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Cool. Yeah. And I got kind of... a uh, skillet head sticker. I saw that. I was like, I want one. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's cool. <laughs> Old skillet head. <laughs> But well, uh, I got to say with the, what was up with the beard? Because like, you look like a totally different person with a beard. Yeah. I was like, is that, is, am, I, am I still on the right channel? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's a story to that. And all of us country boys around here hunt and fish. And uh, in November, there's what's called no shave November. So typically I wear just a goatee. I've still got a kind of a, oh, half inch beard now, but, um, and I may trim that back when it goes to really getting hot, 
to just a goatee. But in November, we all just let it go. And I mean, usually starting in October and, uh, and, it, and it usually carries on up until right after the first of the year. Well, I let it go a little longer than that because one of the friends of ours in the, uh, you know, the YouTube world behind the garage barbecue, I'm not sure if you are familiar with Craig with behind the garage barbecue, but anyway, he had a real long ZZ top looking beard, you know, and mine was getting down there. And so it was just, uh, just a lot of fun, really. And we kind of cut up and carried on about it. And then just one day I got up and I thought, you know, I'm going to trim my beard back. So I did. And that's kind of shocked people a little bit. I was like, oh, he looks like the sticker now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try to keep it fresh, you know, try to keep it interesting. <laughs> so what other things do you have coming up on your channel? Well, I'm working on some shorts, actually. This, uh, this short thing is uh, kind of the rave in YouTube land now, you know, trying to compete with uh, TikTok. TikTok and everything. So... Uh, you know, how do you I, feel about shorts? Well, to be honest, initially I was reluctant. I, I did one and I didn't do another one for a very long time. And I just kind of sat back and analyzed this for a little bit. And I would talk to the people that I would interview. Karen has done real well with her shorts. Um, uh, another couple that I interviewed down in Florida also, that's Cam and Teresa, they're, uh, uh, show or their channel name is flower eggs and yeast and oh, i didn't realize they were in florida yeah they're a great great couple we love them <laughs> they do a great job and uh they uh they've been after me all of them pushing me on the short deal and uh, basically uh the shorts will help you gain subscribers fairly quickly um, now the watch time hours that you need if you're looking at doing monetization which a lot of us smaller channels are, are trying to achieve. Uh, shorts really doesn't help you that much with uh, watch time hours. Matter of fact, the shorts on the short shelf, it's called, really doesn't count toward your monetization anyway, your hours. But now, if you, uh, you know, if you uh, SEO your information, your all your tags, title, and, and uh, uh, description mm -hmm. well, then, it, you know, it's searchable. And if it comes up on either the browse section or the suggestion session of another video or, you know, something like that, then it accounts for your watch time. Whatever that one is viewed by, you get your watch time. But now if it's on the shorts or the short shelf, that time doesn't. And which are only 60 seconds or less, you know. Yeah. But gosh, when you get and I think I, I had I had one that was biscuits and gravy in a cast iron skillet. And I think I've had, I don't know, 1900 views or something like that in just a matter of less than a week. So I'm just kind of playing with it, you know, dabbling with it. And I've gained some subscribers. Matter of fact, we just passed over 700 this weekend. So congratulations. Yeah, we're moving on up a little bit. And, uh, uh, so are you doing shorts? I, I put out three this week, um, because Valentine's day or Valentine's day week, I put out a short <laughs> about, a the heart shaped cookies. I was going to sell at the market. Um, and like overnight it got like 3000 views. Yeah. It's crazy. And the thing is like before that, I really just did it because I, it was my first time doing the market and I didn't like really think about how much time that was going to take away from editing a video, um, like a longer video. So um, I was like, all right, let me just push out a short, you know, like shorts are, you know, the thing anyway, let's see. But uh, before that, like, I just keep thinking, like, I don't want YouTube to become TikTok. Like I really do enjoy YouTube as the, you know, the community aspect. And I just feel like if you don't get to have these like long format conversations or even long format video content, you use a lot of the context of what you're trying to say. Right. And um, so I hope it doesn't like just trend towards being just like TikTok. Like I don't need another TikTok. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. That's what I like about the live interviews because you gain so much watch time hours uh, when you do a live on YouTube uh, versus just uploading a video. Like I may upload, uh, say, a cast iron, whatever, whatever I'm cooking, and I may get X amount of views. Well, you know, I'm only getting a certain amount of, of watch time hours. But when you have 20 to 30 people in your chat room, and you do a one hour live show, then you're gaining, you know, 20 or 30 hours uh, of watch time hours. And I mean, it multiplies quickly. So that's one quick way of, you know, reaching your, your watch time hours. So I'm over halfway now. I've got, uh, of course, like I said, we just bumped over 700 subscribers, which you have to have a thousand and you have to have 4,000 watch hours. And I'm like, uh, I want to say 2,100 hours now. So we're moving on. Yeah. That's one thing I'm a little nervous about. Cause I make it, I'll make a year <clears throat> at some point in the beginning of March. And um, then those watch hours expire. Oh <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. No, it's, no? it's the previous 365 days. Yeah. So once I hit a year, like that'll be 365 days. Like the, no. the rolling thing. Won't. No, it'll be 365 days prior to the to the current day. Yeah. You don't lose it in one year and have to. No, no, I'm not it. saying I'll lose all of it, but like okay. you know, yeah. the stuff in the beginning. Right. You know, right. when I had like. Yeah, some of it. The search because you're new and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's going to start like rolling, and that's going to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. You may look at that. I mean, you. Uh, uh, of course, I've kind of mentioned that a little bit, I think to you before, but you may want to look at that. Uh, the lives direct with YouTube will gain you so much more watch time hours versus just uploading uh, a video or a recording. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try that out, but it's just uh, number one, the consistency, like the one thing you have like specific day where you do that. Um, so I got to figure that out, but also um, I just got a new phone. So it should definitely work now, but yeah. it wasn't working off my laptop. But then I was talking to Karen and she was telling me that StreamYard kind of like circumvents that problem somehow. Yes. So yeah. I downloaded StreamYard, but I haven't had a chance to play around with it. So yeah. we'll see. it's definitely sure. coming. Well, you have my email and uh, we're on Instagram. If I can help you in any way, I'll be more than happy to just shoot me. You know, I, I've, I've, fooled around with it quite a bit. I, I know quite a bit about it and I use it all the time. I love it. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's not the perfect format. There's, there's issues from time to time. Matter of fact, I was interviewing a guy from Tennessee the other day and it just, I mean, it just died on me. And it's the first time and only time I've ever had that happen. Of course, there was a lot of stormy weather going on too and different things at, at that particular time. But anyway, I, created another one within just a couple seconds, shot it back out. I thought, man, I've lost all of my viewers, but uh, the, uh, the moment that I created, um, you know, the, uh, the show, it popped up and they got notifications and everybody were right back in the, in the chat room. So we never really lost anyone. He was able to get back on and, uh, we had a great interview, but it showed up as two videos. Okay. So it goes directly. So the people that are watching are, yeah, I was watching on YouTube. There we go. All right. Never mind. I answered my own question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah so. It's great. And, uh, but the uh, amount of watch time that I've gained versus just uploaded, you know, just a general uploaded video, uh, quite a bit of difference. And so. That's so what's another. your favorite? I mean, I'm sure you don't have like a, you might have an all-time favorite thing to cook, but I feel like I don't. I feel like you have like a like go through like cycles and phases of yeah. cooking things. So yeah. what's the what's the favorite right now? Uh, gosh, I love a good fatty ribeye. I love to cook steaks. I cook for Teresa and I all the time. Um, whether she's lying to me or not, she said, Mike, you cook the best ribeye. She said, this is better than any restaurant we ever go to. But, you know, it's just years and years and years of, you know, fine tuning it. I love to do that. Uh, one of my favorites uh, is chili. I love to cook chili. And uh, I've got that recipe that it's not too hot for people. And, 
she doesn't like a lot of spicy food anyway, but I, I have, uh, I have it right probably to the edge of what she can stand. I, I bump, you know, <laughs> I push the envelope a little bit with her, but it's all good. Um, gosh, I don't know. I, what do you I like just, to eat your uh, chili with? Are you a potato person? Are you a rice person? A cornbread person? Uh, cornbread's great. I love that. But basically, um, I like uh, Fritos and scoops and stuff <laughs> like that. Just Yeah, chips. Just pour <laughs> the chili over some chips and got some sprinkled cheese. And, or that's what we call it anyway, shredded cheese, but a little sprinkled cheese on there and Maybe some jalapeno slices or something like that, if you like them. And, man, I'm good to go. Eat a bowl or two of that, and I'm looking for a recliner. (laughs) Yeah, we've got to sit down somewhere. Maybe lay down, you know? (laughs) Maybe uh, some chili nachos would be good for the nacho bowl. Yeah. Matter of fact, before you did that, I seen your video you put up on that. I had made some, I had made a nacho video for, uh, you know, for the Super Bowl. And so maybe I can reword it and just tag your tag in there, can I? Maybe. I think, well, you have to shout somebody out, you know. (laughs) Maybe maybe you could do that in the description. There's no rule against that. Yeah. I wouldn't cheat you there. uh, Matter of fact, what I did on my nacho, recipe was i used pulled pork uh, oh, i love pulled pork on my nachos yeah so it wasn't chilly but that's an idea yeah sorry one second my boyfriend's like blowing up my phone like he doesn't know i'm doing an interview right now all right love you bye <laughs> he goes oh <laughs> he's like your phone's not picking up it's so weird <laughs> i was like <laughs> oh good i should have jumped up and got a refill on coffee while you're doing that if you were going to edit it out but um oh nah, you got a refill I'm, i got it out it's fine if you want yeah, okay. to pee you know nah, i got some water here <laughs> I, I didn't wasn't sure what to expect or how long you would normally do one i typically try to do an hour on my uh interviews but sometimes they they go hour and a half, two hours. I mean, it's just so interesting and they just, uh, so many questions pop up. You know, that's another thing too, that I, I failed to mention earlier and may, maybe I did, I'm not sure, but the, re- the interaction out of the chat room, because they'll, they'll go to asking questions that you can ask the guest and just the interaction amongst all of them. It, it's just powerful. And of course, YouTube, you know, they look at all that reaction, how much chat, how many chat messages there are, uh, how long someone stays on, and all that has an impact on your on your uh, video. Yeah, I was thinking about that, too, because I'm trying to, do you think, I mean, have you done it before by yourself? Because I noticed, like, your wife helps out with reading the comments, and I don't, it uh, seems like that might be a lot. Yeah, Saturday night I did uh, one by myself. Um interviewed a gentleman from uh, up around St. Louis area, uh, Brandon with Taylor's fire and smoke. I'm not sure if you've ever seen any of his videos or not. He's a great cook too. Uh, but I did that. I was running solo. Now you can, uh, have people as moderators. You can assign people, other people to be a moderator. And I've got a couple moderators. And so what they do, uh, the moderator will have a, there's an insignia beside their name. It's a blue wrench really is what all it is. It looks like a wrench and it's blue colored. And you can tell that you can spot that in the chat room. And usually, uh, I have a guy from down in Trinidad and Tobago. He's my moderator and he's real good at it. And, uh, he will usually tell everyone in the chat room, if you have a question for uh, whoever I'm interviewing, just to be sure and put the at symbol at Mr. Cast Iron and whatever the question is. So when he puts at and my name, it highlights my name in the chat room where it catches my eye. Matter of fact, it turns my name orange and I can see that pop up in the chat room. And I know he sent me a message basically that there's a question. And so I can pop that up on the screen of whatever the question may be for that, for that guest. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I think my neighbor, maybe I can get my neighbor to help me. My neighbor, um, I'm going to have him on the podcast too, but <clears throat> he um, he's from the Bahamas and he actually got me into the tiki market. He, um, he always wanted to be a pastry chef. <laughs> And uh, I had the plants outside, which is another reason I love the plants because all my neighbors start talking to me then. And he was, you know, hey, I like the plants. And I was like, oh, you know, I was talking to him. And then um, so I wound up trading him basically like pastry chef lessons for um, a ride to the the farmer's market and like yeah. introducing me to like the people there and stuff like that. Yeah. So we kind of have like a barter system going on. So maybe I can uh, cool. get him to moderate the chat for some yeah. more pastry lessons. <laughs> yeah. And you can have as many moderators as you want. Uh, I'm probably going to add a few more. Teresa helps me when she's here. <clears throat> and then I have two others, but I'm looking at maybe adding a couple more that way, you know, if someone's not able to make it that weekend and we can have someone there and, you know, it's just, the world we live in, I mean, you may have a troll every now and then it'll pop up. I haven't that I've noticed, uh, but I've heard other people that do live interviews say that, but the moderators can eliminate that. They can delete that message out. You know, if there's, uh, you know, if someone's cussing or saying something or pestering somebody or whatever, you know, just some people just, they don't have a life and they want to run everybody else, you know. I, I welcome the trolls. I, uh, I don't think the, uh, you know, the censorship, censorship, cens censorship <laughs> is not. Say that three the, times. Uh, time. <laughs> um, you know, I think the uh, solution to bad speech is more good speech. It's not uh, silencing people because, uh, you know, they're not going to learn anything. They're just going to be like, that. fuck you. But they're yeah. not going to. Even if they don't learn anything anyway, you know, I think it's important to just, you know, show them that I see you. You're not welcome. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, there. I had a couple trolls on one of my, my videos that I still got to redo about sharpening a knife. Um, and they weren't, um, they weren't wrong with the like the sharpening the knife part like it was a different in culinary school you learn kind of to do it like a swiping motion but it seems like in the hunting realm you learn more like straight up and down like this um but the straight up and down actually does get it sharper like i wound up testing it and going oh this is actually better um but Everyone, but like one, one person was like very like informational and I really appreciate like that kind of critique really in right. the comments, yeah. but the other people were like this dumb bitch. I'm going to like shank yeah. her with my sharp knife because she's going to dull one. I'm yeah. like, come on, man. <laughs> but, uh, and then there was one guy who was like literally dressed up like a troll. Like he had like a shield and a sword and like the fur. And I was like, you look like you look on live under a bridge man like what are you doing but um so far i haven't like those are the worst ones i've gotten besides like the ones that are just like porno bots you know those are yeah good. i delete those out fairly quickly as soon as those pop up and, it's always uh, it's always the same asian lady with uh censored out nipples <laughs> Yeah. She shows uh, up on everyone else's. I'm like, you cheating on me? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, I mean, it, it, it's few and far between really. We talk a lot about that from time to time on our show. Uh, you know, if you have stuff like that, it's a question I ask sometimes, you know, you get any negative feedback or whatever. And, uh, very rarely, you know, that's a great thing about YouTube. I mean, it's, 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 it's few and far between really. And uh, that's, that's good. It's exciting. I, uh, I really enjoy YouTube more than anything. Um, uh, Facebook, I mean, we still keep Facebook just basically to, 
you know, make sure friends and family are doing okay or someone hadn't passed away or whatever, been in a bad wreck or whatever the case may be, you know. Well, I we feel try. like Facebook is very, like, uh, pay-to-play now. Um, a lot of my posts, just they don't get seen at all unless I was going to boost the post and pay for it, like an advertisement. Um, like, you know, even just putting a YouTube link on there or... Um, I tried to put the link on for the free class that I'm doing and like nobody saw it, <laughs> you know? So it's yeah. YouTube will, if people like the stuff, it will, I mean, obviously because there's so many more content creators now, um, it does get to the point where it is a little bit of pay to play, but it's nothing like Facebook, you know? Uh maybe one tip that I might could share with you on that of the experience that I've had with it. Uh, YouTube, or I'm sorry, Facebook certainly don't want anyone leaving Facebook going to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, true. so when you put a link, a lot of times Facebook kind of, yeah, they don't they show it. it much, but if you take and write some kind of little article in your uh, status and then just say, you know, if you're interested in this or whatever, it'll be down in the comments. And then you leave your link in the comments. And I've had better uh, luck with that versus just uploading a, a YouTube link or something. So, hey, check this video out. You know, right. so if you write a comment or even post some kind of picture, you may even just post a regular picture, say like a thumbnail and say, hey, I just done this today, and, uh, you know, the link's down in the description or whatever. You, mm. you may get better. You may you may get better reaction than that because if it's just a raw link like that from YouTube, I've had them, like, not show up much, and people didn't see it, didn't get much action or reaction or whatever. Hmm. Are you on the TikTok? No, I haven't done the TikTok thing now. My my daughter in law is, and she's done real well with it. Of course, they're you know they're thirty years younger than we are. So, <laughs> but uh, are they like, also uh, doing cooking? Or are they doing something else? No, nah, she's a school teacher, and uh, she's an art teacher actually, and mm -hmm. she's real creative. She does all kinds of things. But the kids, um, my my nephew is <laughs> he didn't get in trouble, but couple kids in the class they you know they're all doing the virtual learning uh they got in trouble for making tiktoks of the class yeah <laughs> like kids these days yeah are you on tiktok uh, i've done a couple i probably have like four or five posts on there basically every time i make a short like yeah. i'm just gonna also put that on tiktok like i might as well you know what i mean so yeah i just hadn't got on board with that it's kind of like shorts, you know. It's the same thing. Yeah, I piddle around with. I'm I'm kind of getting into it because I'm getting some traction with it, and Karen and and Teresa, Cam and Teresa, you know, those two channels they kept after me. Mike, you got to do it. You got to do it. You need to do that, man. You'll gain a bunch of subscribers. You'll gain. So, so I gave in. I got soft and gave in. <laughs> what was the first short about? The very first one I did was, uh, it was a mountain man breakfast actually out on a fire pit and it was right when. What's uh, in a mountain man breakfast? Mountain man breakfast. It's a, uh, a Dutch oven breakfast, one pot breakfast that has, you basically start out with your onions and bell peppers and you saute them down, uh, fry your sausage and bacon or whatever. And, and, uh, take those out and let those drain, but you still keep the bacon grease in there, you know, to saute your onions and bell peppers and everything. And uh, then you may want to drain them off or whatever. Uh, once you do that, you add your sausage and bacon back in, put your bell pepper on top. Uh, then you add a little bit of garlic if you like garlic. And uh, then you uh, uh, whisk up about 10 or 12 eggs and pour that on top. And, uh, then you let that put your lid on, put it on a fire or charcoal, whatever you're using. And uh, you let that cook for 15 or 20 minutes till the eggs set. And then you pull the lid off and put some sprinkle cheese on top of the eggs and 
you put your lid back on, let that set for about five to seven minutes, pull it off, and you got a big meal for a big group, you know, d depending on, you know, what size of a Dutch oven you're using. And so I love that, that term, uh, sprinkle cheese. I never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be using that, won't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, don't forget your sprinkle cheese, folks. You got to have it. Sharp cheddar, by the way. I keep thinking about uh, like the salt bay, the like sprinkle cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be sure and, you know, and sprinkle it. get your sprinkle cheese on there sprinkle for your fingers. pizza. <laughs> yeah. But that, uh, that one did pretty well. I mean, I got quite a bit of traction with that. And uh, then I just backed off and didn't do anything with it for a while. Basically, my, my, hang up with it was watch time. I thought, you know, I'm only getting 50, whatever seconds, however long that was, you know? And so I'm really not gaining a lot of traction and it doesn't even count for, why should I even do this? And so they convinced me with the subscribers because we, uh, several of us, um, we all basically started these channels about the same time and they just exploded with their, their content, great content. They're bakers and um, they all do a great job and they gained a lot of subscribers. And uh, so they convinced me. I mean, oh yeah, that's convinced me too. As soon as I did the cookie video, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this more often. Yeah. So I see a, is that a Woody back there from Toy Story? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. You got a little collection going on there? Yeah, it's my wife's collection. Actually, it's our her son, my stepson, some of it, but Teresa's mainly. She's got cool. a whole box there. Okay. Let's see there. Oh, cool. Do you build those and put them together or you just buy them like that? No, she just bought them like that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. This is my little man cave. This is where I do all my interviews and everything. It's my office and we got. Yeah. What well, would we'll give it away? That is a man cave. <laughs> yeah. Man cave. Got that green sign up above the clock there that says green acres, which is a play on words. My last name is acres. So it's a K E R S and not a C R E S. But uh, I just use that as a play on words. I've heard that all my life, you know, green acres is a place to be. <laughs> Uh, so I've always used that, you know. I actually have no idea what that is. No? <laughs> it's an old show. Yeah, Green Acres. You have to look that up. It's a, it's a guy from, bought a farm, and he had his wife. She was from uh, Manhattan, New York, and they went out and lived on this farm. And it, it's just, it's it's a funny, funny show. It was old. It was back in the... Oh gosh, I'm gonna say late '60s and all through the '70s, and I mean you can find it on YouTube. TV now. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> you can certainly find it on YouTube. You can find a Green Acres clip. I'm, I'm certain. Oh yeah, you can find a lot of stuff on YouTube. Yeah. My, uh, my aunt Mary actually, I'm sure she's uh gonna be listening to this, but um, a lot of times like I talk about like my last video, I was talking about uh like older singers that I remember like my grandma liking or something. And um, I always like, you know, I was a kid, so I don't remember like right. all the details or sometimes not even the correct details. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll uh, send me an email and have like links to the videos of uh, like the old movie that uh, was like, has my grandma's favorite song in it or, you know, just really a, uh, Cool things like that so youtube yeah. is definitely a good resource for the certainly other is there. youtube's so. pretty awesome you can find just about anything you want to find on youtube yep so so back to cast iron <laughs> well actually i want to ask you about the dutch oven what kind of dutch oven do you use oh i have three or four um uh, I have Lodge brand, basically, is most all of mine. I have some others. Um, are they enameled in the inside, or are they all? No, they're, they're just they're the real raw cast iron that are seasoned, yeah. 
Yeah. And ammo's fine. I mean, you know, it's cast iron. I see a lot of people do that on, on a stove, but you can actually do a, a Dutch oven. A camp Dutch oven doesn't have the three legs on it. It's smooth on the bottom, but a regular Dutch oven has three legs that raise it up off the ground all approximately two inches or so. And that allows you to put your coals underneath it. Oh, you can use that on charcoal or you can use it on a fire pit with just regular firewood. Um, you can hang it above. You've seen no, I don't know, you've ha- bound to have seen chuck wagons where they're hanging the pot over the fire. It's like a yeah. cauldron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I've got, oh, I guess four, di- three or four different sizes. I have a, a 10 inch, a 12 inch, a 14 inch. Uh, two 14 inches, I guess. One's deep, one's shallow, but you can do a lot of cooking with it. Anything you basically can cook in an oven in the house, you can cook in a Dutch oven. Yeah, and they're great for bread. Yeah. They're actually better than your house oven because yeah. it's more of a contained environment. So if you want to add steam to it, it's easier to like, you know, spray some water in there yeah. than steaming your whole oven. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Awesome. But, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm surprised That's, you don't have one. I have a, uh, <clears throat> not a cast iron Dutch. I have like a stoneware one um, that I use for bread. But, you know, at some point in my life, I'll get a Le Creuset because <laughs> they're just so pretty. But uh, yeah. I want one. I want one of those, but I also want one that like I could, you know, beat up. You know, yeah. So we'll see. Well, they're durable. I'm telling you, they're durable. And they're, like I said earlier in the beginning of the show, they're real easy. Once you know the basics about it, is to maintain. And uh, even if they get, even if you make a mistake and they get rusty, I mean, it's real easy to restore it real quick. Uh, matter of fact, I have one video on my channel. Uh, my nephew gave me a big fish pan and it had been abused. It had been burnt real bad and, um, uh, was rusty and I restored it back to real good shape. And you know, a crazy thing about that. I've not ever cooked anything in that yet since I restored it. I don't know why, but I mean, it's huge. I mean, you would have to have, I mean, you would have to make like, gosh, I don't know a big jambalaya or something like that gumbo or a big, uh, big pot of dressing or something, you know, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, or a fish. Well, a fish. yeah, you could, but I don't know. I like my regular round Dutch ovens for, for deep frying like that. Well, you could, I mean, you could use that as a chicken fryer. You could fry a lot of chicken. You don't have to fry it. You could like, you know, just cook it <laughs> yeah. regular <laughs> without uh, the bacon grease. <laughs> no, no, no. You got to have bacon grease. Now. <laughs> I got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to use that. I got it all cleaned up and just had never done anything with it. But I've got so many pieces, you know, and, and I have my favorites, you know, it's just something. You get used to using one and that's what you use. I've got a 12 inch, uh, skillet and I have a, uh, 14 inch, uh, grill griddle that I use on a gas grill or gas stove, cook stove. And it fits perfectly on two burners. And I use that almost every day. And, uh, the cast what's your iron's... favorite, uh, sorry. What's your favorite dessert to make in a cast iron? Oh, well, uh, I've made some cobblers, like cobbler. Oh, you like uh, cobbler? Yeah. Have you ever made a uh, apple tartan? Nope. I think you would really enjoy it. It's basically apple pie. It's like fancy apple pie. Right. But uh, you saute the apples and then you kind of like, like arrange them nice in the pan. Yeah. And you put some pie crust on top and throw it in the oven. Yeah. And then you flip it out. <laughs> Yeah. And it stays all together. It's super pretty. Uh, it's it's kind of a dessert in a way, but we've done Dutch babies. What's that? Uh, it's like a pancake. 
Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, you can put different kinds of fruit or whatever you want to put in it. We've done that in cast iron. And then Teresa makes uh, as, uh, <laughs> apple crisp. I almost couldn't get that out for some reason. Thanks, Pastor Schiff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bleep that out, folks. <laughs> but no, she makes a real good apple crisp in, in a cast iron. It works out great. I mean, it's awesome. But I don't do a lot of desserts. Uh, try not to. Uh, she makes uh, she makes some real interesting little pies, but we don't use the Dutch oven or the cast iron with it. I guess we could, but. It's actually really good for um to get that like crust nice and yeah. crispy. Yeah. It's I use it I make pizza a lot in cast iron and cornbread and gosh, all kinds of things, but it get, it does give you that great crust. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've got one video that I just recently posted. Oh, it's been a couple months back now. But I was using just a regular flour tortilla and put it on cast iron in my 12 inch or actually my 13 inch uh, skillet and it fit in there perfectly. And we just put the topping, put the sauce on there, put the toppings in it, throw it in the oven at 450 degrees for about 20 minutes, pull it out and it has the perfect, I mean, perfect thin crust to it. Did you use bacon fat underneath? Nothing. Well, I say nothing. Now my pans are already seasoned. Oh, true. So once so once they heat up and th that's the great thing about cast iron, it's porous. And once it heats up, you know, it expands and that will release. But generally I try to tell everyone, you know, if you're going to cook like that, be sure and, and put a little grease in it, rub it down, heat it up and then wipe that out. And then you're ready to cook with. So also to, like, you know, you obviously use your skillets every day. Um, I will probably wouldn't recommend using bacon fat if you don't use your skillets every day because that will go rancid. <laughs> well, it could. <laughs> if, you yeah. if you don't maintain it. Mm -hmm. If you use like a, a vegetable oil or something mm -hmm. like that, it it's just going to take longer for that to happen. Yeah. So you'd probably have a better. Yeah, I've actually got a video addressing rancid uh, skillets. But, uh, yeah, I use yeah. it all the time. What, what advice I, do you have on uh, rancid skillets? Uh, you'd have to go watch my video. <laughs> 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 no, really, yeah. seriously, and just, you know, uh, real quick there on that. It's simple to do. Uh, basically, you can just take and heat your oven uh, up, or you can use a gas grill if you have one out on the patio or whatever. You can heat a gas grill up. And a matter of fact, that fish pan, that's how I actually – um uh, uh saved that one and, and re uh, seasoned it was on the gas grill but you can use either the oven or gas grill or even a fire pit i don't like fire pits so much because you can't regulate the temperature as well <clears throat> excuse me but like in a kitchen oven you can heat it up to 350 400 some people say crank it up 500 but man 350 400 is fine and just take and flip your skillet or your pan, Dutch oven or whatever, upside down in your grill. Be sure and have some kind of pan down in the bottom to catch any excess oil and heat it up. You know, heat it up for an hour, let it cook off for about an hour, shut the heat off and just let it naturally cool down, pull it out, wipe all that out and uh, do that a couple times. And I mean, the rancid smell will be gone. Because that smell is also bacteria and we don't want anyone you can sick, so initially to set it up i mean you can actually use white vinegar and wipe it down real good before you start okay and you can just take vinegar and rinse it out real good clean it or let it soak in there a little bit and rinse it out and then like i said just flip it upside down in your oven cook it 350 400 for an hour and uh, it'll burn off any rancid old oil oil is just you know it's just uh it's easy to get rid of, but yeah. it's also what you need to, to create that, what we call patina or the black finish. And uh, that's all seasoning is. A lot of people think that it's some, you know, mysterious thing, but I mean, it is in a way of what it is because the oil actually polymerizes. It, it adheres to the pores of that skillet once it's heated up. And all seasoning is, is grease and heat, <laughs> really. Well, I always thought, uh, 
know, when you first hear seasoning too, like when I was a kid, like seasoning to me was like paprika or salt or pepper, you know, like herbs. (laughs) It's just like, wait, but what? But then how, how is it seasoned? I don't get it. Yeah. Is it garlic? I don't know. (laughs) Shake a little more of that on there. This don't look like it's working too well here. (laughs) (laughs) So you said you learned how to cook from your mother. Yes. So you have no, uh, no formal training. No, uh, I'm an untrained professional. So what was your favorite thing to cook with your mother? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I'm the baby of the family. Of course, my mom and dad both have since passed away. But uh, growing up, uh, you know, she taught me how to make eggs. And, you know. What's your to, favorite way to eat an egg? I like them over easy. Me too. That's yeah. my favorite. Uh, and gravy. Mom taught me to do gravy, and gravy is an art. What's your gravy base? Like bacon pork, grease. Chicken? Of course. Why did I even ask? <laughs> <laughs> Sausage, you know, pork fat. <laughs> Come on, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like sausage gravy. Biscuits and gravy. Do you make your own sausage? Uh, uh, venison, I do sometimes. Venison sausage, breakfast sausage, which basically just, you know, I'm not, I don't know if you have done any venison dishes or anything, but venison breakfast sausage, basically you just take deer grind, which is kind of like ground beef, and uh, you can just take ground pork and add that together and mix those two together and then put whatever kind of seasonings so spices that we're talking about in with that you know like sage and whatever you want to add to it whatever however you want to flavor it mix all that together and you got breakfast venison breakfast sausage i've got a video about that matter of fact oh i'm gonna (laughs) put uh, some links in the description that's cool oh mercy but yeah, uh, as far as making my own sausage, like um, like pork sausage, no. Well, I mean, if you're mixing the venison and the pork, it's like I have pork sausage too. Well, the reason why is venison is so lean. There's there's no fat to it. So in yeah. order for it to uh, you know kind of stick together or whatever, you got to put a little pork fat with it. And you know if you mix, I mean, you can do it one to one. You can do one pound of Ground why venison did you one. choose pork? Why didn't you choose like beef or something like that? I mean, I guess you could, you know, beef tallow is good too, but uh, I don't know. Everybody just basically adds pork fat to it right. uh, that I've ever experienced as far as deer sausage. And uh, it works out good. It's good. Yeah, I really like venison, but yeah. it's uh Sometimes it's a little, I feel like when people don't cook it right, it's like very gamey and that turns people off to it. But like, I remember well, I had this venison chili once, the first time I had it and I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think gaminess a lot of times in venison is, uh, it, it comes from how it's processed you know, oh, or how it's okay. field dressed when it's first shot or killed. A lot of times that, that brings about some of the gaminess to it. But So that doesn't sound good. Like, does that mean it's not good? <laughs> no, no, not no. necessarily. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can cook a lot of that out, but it's, it's best to do it on the front end if you can. So I don't know uh, that much about hunting. Like, how would you do that? Like, what does that mean? Can you elaborate? Yeah, it's, uh, well, I mean, it just once you slaughter something, once you kill something, I don't care if it's at a slaughterhouse or whatever, you know, it, it, it immediately goes to uh, setting up and deteriorating. And so, like, if you're out in the field, you kill kill a deer, you know, it's best to get it field dressed and and 
mean, I don't want to try to be sounding gross or anything on here on your channel. I know this doesn't gross me out. This is, yeah, you but know. you got to get it gutted out and get those entrails out of it and get it cooled down. You need to get, you know, it. Um, sometimes they're killed when it's pretty warm out and not not as cold as usual. So you need to get those guts out, entrails, and get ice in there or whatever. And that's just a way of cooling it down and keeping it to where you can get it where you can get it cut up, processed. That's one way of doing it. Oh, so you put, I didn't realize you had to cool it down like that. I thought they like hung it up to get the blood out of it. Well, I mean, when you get it from the field to them, yeah, you do hang it up. Uh, and really the, you, when you hang it up, the longer you're able to hang it up, the better. That's called bleeding it out. I mean, you let it kind of bleed out good, but yeah, it's from the field to the processor. That's a big step quicker you can get those centrals out uh huh. so do you process your own stuff uh we we got it i'll say that we got it and get the entrails out and uh, and then basically get it to a processor we got a young man that uh, in our community that does it we got a couple places here in our area really and so yeah, because they're a lot of hunting. It's probably good butchers, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, my brother-in-law is a butcher here at our grocery store. So, But, you know, over the years of doing it, hunting for years, you learn to cut things up. I could. I mean, I could I, if I had the facility, if I had a way of uh, doing it a little easier, I could probably process my own. I could process my own, really, but it's just so much easier to pay them to do it. Oh, yeah. And usually when you're hunting, I mean, it's October, November, it's cold. <laughs> you don't want to sit outside cutting up meat, you know. <laughs> I don't. I'd rather have a pot of chili on and eat me a couple bows and go sit in a recliner, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds good. I yeah. got to make chili soon. You got me thinking about chili now. Yeah. Maybe watch a Cowboys play or something like that, you know. Nah. I'm not really a big football fan. I don't know. You a cowboy fan? Pretty much have been all my life through thick and thin. I've been with them through thick and thin. I know everybody hates them, but it's America's team. Everybody admit it. Just go ahead and get over it. It's America's team. So why is it America's team? And I don't know. That's just what any... they've always been called for years. But isn't it? Uh, they haven't won all anything. Football teams America like nobody else plays football. You know what I mean? They it's haven't won in else. years, <laughs> so I don't know. I still stick with them. I don't watch it as we're much as I used to when I was a kid. But we always had. It. We're like, even though I don't watch football, you know, like I got to be a Giants fan because yeah. I'm from uh, North Jersey. So are you? The play at the Meadowlands. So yeah, it's a huge deal when they won the Super Bowl. Where are you from? Out in that area? From Nutley, New Jersey, which is a. Uh, the hometown of Martha Stewart, <laughs> really? but it's also, uh, it's right by Newark, the airport. Yeah. Um, it's actually, it's a very like Italian town, um, which uh, is pretty much how I learned to cook all my, my the food because everyone around me was Italian. So yeah. they're like, oh, you want to be a chef? Come learn this. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. That is cool. Pizza. A lot of good Italian and Greek food out in that area. Yep. And it's just a, you know, it's right by New York City. Like, where uh, if there was no such thing as traffic, it would only take you like 20 minutes to get there. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a, just a huge melting pot. I'm, I miss that a lot about up there because uh, down here in Florida, it's like you're either Spanish, Haitian, or white, pretty much. Um, so it's not, not a lot of Italian food, <laughs> but, uh, you know, some really good, uh, Caribbean food, which is nice, but you know, they have everything up there, you know, and everyone's, it's kind of like YouTube where everybody's collaborating with each other. So you get all these cool fusion things, Yeah. you know, and you don't need a car, which is nice. <laughs> I miss yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I enjoy uh, I enjoy cooking out, 
and Teresa and I do that quite a bit, but um, it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun. We enjoy, you know, the fire pit sitting around the fire pit, quiet, not a lot of noise, not a lot of traffic and uh, cooking on cast iron. <laughs> what cuisines have you tried to do besides like, you know, your classic American stuff? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty simple, I guess. I I, uh, <laughs> I like soups and stews. I, I love, you know, of course, I mentioned chili. I love soups. I love one-pot stuff. You know, I make a lot of one-pot stuff. Yeah, because dishes are terrible. <laughs> no one wants to stand there and do t- dishes all night, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beef stew, chili. Um, gosh, I don't know. What's one cuisine that like intimidates you? Intimidates me? Yeah. Mm. And you'd be like, oh, that seems complicated. <laughs> uh, Italian, a little bit. Some of the things there. Uh, Italian? Uh, That's yeah. probably one of the uh, easier like, ones. Well, I just feel like you need not that many ingredients that are hard to get whereas like i really want to learn more about indian cuisine and like you know the there's a just like a whole shot like indian food is like really complicated Mm -hmm. depending on like where you're from and like you know as americans we generalize everything so like we got like indian asian but there's like so many categories within that so I did an interview with um, a Indian Canadian in, from India, moved to Canada. Um, so I think I'm going to try to make like a tikka masala mm. or a, which isn't really Indian <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> but, uh, and naan because that's like such a cool bread. Yeah. And I think actually, I think that would be really uh, like come out really well in a cast iron skillet. Yeah. If you because who has a tandoori oven lying around? You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's right. So yeah, and I probably should make more bread. I make cornbread, but I make some really good sourdough cinnamon rolls. And a lot of people around in our community, especially some of the little ladies at our church, you know, they say, "Why hadn't Mike made any cinnamon rolls in his cast iron?" You know, they're big followers of me mainly on YouTube or on Facebook because. I'll upload my videos. And Teresa was telling me about it the other day. She said, one of the ladies at church said, why hadn't he made them cinnamon rolls he used to make all the time? Cause I used to make them a lot and sell them actually, even farmer's market and different things. But That was actually, I had them for the first time this weekend and they sold out. And that's why I'm doing the class on Saturdays, cinnamon buns. Because Are you going to do some cinnamon buns? Yeah. Because I'm just like, well, people like them. So <laughs> What are you, uh, what, 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 you said a class, what are you? Yeah, I'm going to do a virtual class and then the cinnamon buns that I make in the class the next morning is the uh, farmer's market. So one of the problems I'm having is like, I can't just have all these cinnamon buns here and gain like 15 pounds just eating cinnamon buns all day. Yeah, that, yeah it's tempting. So I figured the market would be a good place to like sell the stuff that I make in the videos because you know my, right now I feel like I don't like hopefully I get monetized soon <laughs> and um, I can use that money to produce more content but right mm-hmm. now I'm relying on like the things that I don't have to do too much research on because I just know them so well Yeah, you know so um but all those things are very fattening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. like, I want to do coffee cake. I want to do cobbler because they're related. And I want to show people how things are related and stuff like that. So, like, coffee cake, the streusel topping is <clears throat> the same streusel crumb that you use in cobbler. So, it's like you can do two different things with this type thing. So... But then I'm not, I can't just sit around eating cobbler and coffee cake all day. So. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. 
That's cool. Yeah, that ought to give you a good crust, no doubt. Uh, I I don't know. I may I, I've got my starter in the refrigerator. I may have to. What's your uh, what kind of cinnamon buns frosting do you use? Buttercream. Buttercream. Yeah. It's interesting. I it. It's a pet peeve of mine when people use just powdered sugar and water. Yeah, or I don't do that. Woo, drives me nuts. So cheap. Yeah. I use cream cheese frosting on mine. Yeah. Well, now we, we did initially, but uh, our farmer's market, uh, they wouldn't allow us to have anything that needed to be cooled. So being cream cheese, it would have to be at a certain temperature, so they wouldn't allow it. So we went to a buttercream. And I mean, we would sell out. I would sell out before nine o'clock most mornings. And some of the vendors would just be setting up and they're over there looking like, well, what's he doing down there? You know, but it was my cinnamon rolls and they were, they, they'd sell out fast. How many? Uh, that's weird because buttercream would also need to be held at a certain temperature. <laughs> they allowed it. So huh. we did it. Cream cheese is a. Because you have to melt the cream cheese on the cinnamon thing. It's not like, that's kind of strange. Whatever, you know, temperature danger zone and, you know, pass up. I got I to gotta re-up my license just so I can uh, bother people. <laughs> so you're doing a uh, virtual show like on uh, Zoom or are you, how are you doing that? Yeah, this is going to be my first one. So I'm sure oh, okay. there's going to be um, some bumps. But basically, I'm using Shopify to host my website and do all like the point of sale stuff. And there's an app, there's like certain apps you can download into your Shopify store. Um, and one of them was this app called Serve, and it um, integrates Zoom with like appointment booking. So you can go on the website and like buy the class, even though it's free right now. Um, and then you're supposed to get a zoom link and I'm trying to figure out because if right now I have like the, the re not like the method of the recipe, but like all the ingredients you need and the measurements and stuff in the description. And then I also just like made my own email to like, to send out when I knew someone like bought it. Um, but I wish they had something integrated where like, if someone bought it, it would automatically send that email with like all the stuff you need for class. <laughs> oh. So I'm working on that. Hmm. Um, and, you know, I used to teach um, <clears throat> classes at Sur La Table and, you know, they pay next to nothing. And then I realized they were doing virtual classes and I'm like, you know, they're selling, like they say really selling per guest. So like, Say on your computer screen, you got two people. They want you to pay $29 per person, which is a lot for a virtual yeah. class, I think. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking if you could do that per computer screen and you have like a business, because even if you have like, you know, two to four people on the other end, like watching yeah. class and stuff, it, you know, at least I could do that while I'm waiting to get monetized on YouTube. Yeah. You know, and hopefully that'll, you know, subscribers will sign up for classes and people who take the class will subscribe type of thing. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but you're welcome to come. Ah, yeah. when it's is this? It's a Saturday at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, so 1 p.m. your time. Mm. Okay. It'd be good to have some, you know, some feedback that's not my mom. <laughs> I don't know exactly what all we got going on just yet, but if you don't mind, shoot me an email with the Zoom link, and I'll, uh, if I can, I'd, I'd like to set in on that. Yeah. I don't know the, are, are your uh, guests, are they going, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to be cooking also, or? It, I mean, you can, your, you can cook along, um, you can not cook along, and I'm going to leave that up to the, you know, up to the person. The only thing I'm foreseeing is like a kind of hiccup is like, like the way I have it structured now is like, we're going to do the dough and then we're going to do the filling and the icing. 
and then, you know, fill the cinnamon buns and cut them because it, you know, doing this, the filling and the icing should be enough time for the bulk fermentation. Um, but I'm, you still need to let it proof a little bit before you put yeah. it into the oven. So I think like that a lot of time might be a little funny. We'll see. Um, I don't know whether we take a break and come back or, you know, we just chat for a while or we'll see how it goes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Have you, uh, have you been on any, uh, Karen's lives on YouTube yet? No, I didn't even see, like, YouTube doesn't even notify me that she's doing a live. Yeah. I get your notifications uh, every time I'm in a car <laughs> driving somewhere. <laughs> yeah, she's doing one, I think, tomorrow. Um, gosh, I can't remember what she's going to be cooking, but, yeah, I'm happy for her. She was kind of, uh, she was like me there in the beginning. She kind of not really reluctant, but, or not really hesitant, but wasn't sure how it was going to play out. And she's done good. I mean, she's done two or three now and she'll cook a whole meal right there. I'm going to check it out. I got to, um, she's going to come to the class actually on Saturday. Yeah. So, so like coming to the class, like she's going to show up at my house, but <laughs> virtually. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, man, I think that's great. I think you might could go somewhere with that. But I think you could probably do good with that. I hope you do. So do, so do I. Got to, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. make because, something out of this for the, from the pandemic. So Yeah. Yeah, it's changed the world, hasn't it? Yeah, I really think, like, you got to go virtual. Like, you got to be more mm -hmm. module because it's not a – especially like as a chef, like we didn't get paid that much to begin with, you know, that's one of the reasons why I left and I started flying. And um, I don't think that's going to change, you know, you gotta be your own brand. Yeah. And they can just shut you down whenever, like, you know, most people working in kitchens don't have health insurance. They don't have it. They're living paycheck to paycheck and they're working two or three jobs. They're not. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah, bad deal. I know a lot of people, my uh, stepson and uh, his wife just recently went to uh, Disney World and they were talking about all the things that was, uh, you know, they're not doing. They're, it's it's shut down. I mean, like they don't have the fireworks at, you know, the end of the evening like they used to. They don't have the all uh, the area where you could eat you know, different kinds of food all around the world or whatever. I forget what it's called, but anyway. I don't, yeah. yeah. My best friend works there actually. Um, but a lot of, she was actually um, in, because <clears throat> it's, the workers are like, are unionized. Um, so she was like the last, the first person on the, the list of people that got like re- what do they call them? Re not replaced, displaced. So it sounded like they were orphans or something. So basically, instead of, you know, like firing them for a while, like she had to go from working in like one of the hotels or whatever, having like a management level job to mm. like stocking shelves, you know, just yeah, so she wouldn't crazy. be fired. Um, and then everyone like above her, like got to stay in there position um but they're lucky you know you're lucky you have that yeah. or else everyone would just be gone so yeah it's crazy yeah. <laughs> it's like oh unions are important because uh yeah when you're replaceable like someone has to do the work but if they can replace you with a machine or someone that can do it for a lower wage they will you know then you know Sad, your money but true. Nice. <laughs> yeah Wow. And then, of course, it affected the airline, so you were affected that way, right? Yeah, my uh, airline, it's uh, the whole long-haul operation is completely shut down. So, um, everyone, a few of my friends just got hired at Spirit, um, which is good, but I'm trying to, because as soon as you get hired with an airline, 
they can base you wherever they want to base you. Um, and I already moved once. Like <laughs> my boyfriend has to get his uh, airplane mechanic license. And then like, I'll think about like flying again, but hopefully this stuff takes off and I'll just get to travel. Cause I did it cause I wanted to see the world and right. I got to do some amazing things. Um, you know, I got to see places I've never even thought about going to, you know? Mm. <laughs> so uh, like, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything, but I think maybe, you know, hopefully this works out and it's, you know, kind of time to move on and, Hopefully I'll get to travel for doing this instead of yeah. traveling because you got to take, you know, shuttle people back and forth. So yeah. We'll see. Cool. Go see chefs and stuff. Go, yeah. see, <laughs> go see the Green Acres over there. You never know. I mean, it's that's crazy because I was just, I was on another live last night with some guys and some of them, um, uh, well, not some of them that were on there last night, but they were talking about it. And then I watched a video this morning uh, of some guys that was actually at a an event down in Texas recently. And so, I mean, every one of them had YouTube channels, you know, so it can happen. You know, I want to do that. And I, uh, Teresa and I have talked a little bit about it. It'd be so cool, you know, to travel around and meet some of these people in person that we've interacted with. Yeah, so many of them. I mean, some people aren't even that far from me. So I'm like, oh, yeah. maybe I could go do that. But a lot of it too is like, you gotta, you know, I don't, I'm not vaccinated yet. And I might, I might have immunity. I probably have to get one of those antibody tests. Um, but you just, you've got to be careful, you know? Yeah, that's right. So we'll see. My mom got vaccinated. Like, I want to go visit my brother in uh, Nevada, but. I don't want to, you know, his wife is pregnant and they have a little kid. Like, I don't want to yeah. bring anything to them. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, it'll be careful. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like a depressing turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could do good on that if you uh, if you play your cards right on it all. Because once you do uh, get monetized on YouTube, you know you can have people uh, subscribe and uh, join your group, basically, you know, as a subscription type deal, and offer maybe some classes to people that sign up. That's another way of of you know, monetizing, not just off of Google AdSense. Yeah. You got to have different uh, revenue streams. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And I'd like, I already wrote, I wrote a cookbook, but I would like to write another cookbook, but I don't really want to do another book until um, I know people will buy it. You know what I mean? Like people, like I have a distribution channel for the marketing for it. Um my last one was not, it was kind of like dead in the water because I got banned on Facebook and Instagram for uh, marketing because it was about cooking with marijuana. But when you're the little guy, you know, like they don't notice your appeal because that kind of thing, like, number one, it's a book. You're not selling drugs. <laughs> number two, mm -hmm. you see all these like, advertisements of people that are actually selling marijuana and they don't get banned so yeah. but they have money behind them and that's the big yeah. difference so that's um yeah yeah you know, I know. So the next one probably won't be about marijuana either so that might be a little bit easier <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i was into cbd oil pretty heavily at one time and um uh, yeah, that works wonders for, you know, anti-inflammatory yeah. uh, things like, you know, arthritis and there's a whole list of things it's great for. But initially when it was starting in the initial startup, like you say, you know, Facebook and YouTube and different ones, they didn't like that. And they would ban you. <laughs> yep. 
I know firsthand I lost over a hundred videos. <clears throat> Basically I had uh, uh, a bunch of videos I had to take down because of that. That you were cooking other. with CBD? Or you just... no, I wasn't cooking. It was just basically talking about CBD oil. And uh, yeah, I had to take about 100 of them down. Uh, I've, I've been monetized and demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, no, that's not true. I, I've been, they changed the criteria for monetization about the same time. And so I was monetized and I'm still approved. All I got to do is reach the threshold of a thousand and, and 4,000 watch hours. I still have my Google AdSense account and I'm, I make a little money off my website, you know, from Google AdSense. But when that happened and I had to take all those videos down, <clears throat> you know, it killed my YouTube money. Oh, and yeah. then, then at that same point in time, they changed the criteria and put in place what they have now with the 1000 subscribers and, and 4,000 watch hours, which I didn't have then. Well, once I took all the videos down, I lost all the traffic. So welcome to keto style and Mr. Cast iron. <laughs> So you, you just do what you got to do. I mean, they, they shut my account down for a little while and um, we got it back. I mean, I argued the fact with it and YouTube really just doesn't care. I mean, sometimes, and, uh, but I argued my point and uh, they, they reinstated me and, uh, but I had to take certain, certain amount of certain, certain videos down. Let me put it that way. Yeah, I got one in my, I'm probably going to have to take down my space cookie video. Something got approved for monetizing. <laughs> but man, I said you could use CBD. They actually put like an age limit on it, like 18 and older. But I mean, I'm fine with that. As yeah. long as it doesn't affect yeah. money. At one time they went through and they, they shut a bunch of channels down. I also I was, think that makes it... It just shows that it's also important, like, to have your own website where you're getting, like, you know, the emails, lists, and stuff like that. So this way, if you do get shut down, like, you're not completely, yeah. you know, destitute. Yeah, I don't work my website like I should. It's it's a cast iron website. It's got, you know, some information on it. It's got some recipes on it. And I really should... Uh, you know, I really should put some of this information from YouTube on, but should take and transcribe it and make it, you know, articles out of it. And I just, I, I haven't, I don't, and I should. Well, it takes a lot of time, you know, yeah, it does. that's the thing. But, you know, it will really help you. I mean, I know it will to earn some money off of it from links. I've been an Amazon affiliate for years. And I make a little money off of that, but I need to up my game, you know, with this monetization thing. And uh, we all do. I mean, there's so much to it. You just got to start and work at it, you know, just like we were talking about, you know, creating a, uh, a group there where you can join once you get a thousand subscribers. You know, you can have where people join for, uh, on your website or on your YouTube channel. Well, you can even have that now, you know, like a, a newsletter or something. Right. And I think that for what I want to do, that would be great because then I can send out a newsletter every time I put up a new class or something right. like that too. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, maybe one week I'm not going to be at the farmer's market and, you know, yeah. I should tell you. <laughs> yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But, well, I'm trying to build my YouTube channel up uh, first. And that's another thing in the background that I'm wanting to do is <clears throat> try to repurpose that material and put it on my website. And, uh, but I'm just trying to get, you know, you can get, you can get too diverse and yeah. 
Yeah, you spread spread too thin. That's yeah. another thing. And and then you're not very good at any of it. You know, I mean, you, you need to get real good at something. And that's what I'm wanting to do is really fine tune my my channel and get in the direction I want to go because it's not just reaching. And we were talking about this on one interview I had uh, Sunday night. You know, it's not, uh, that, that's not the destination as 1000 subscribers right? and, and 4,000 watch hours. That's a milestone. And we want to reach that milestone and continue on even further and reach people and, and share what we have, you know, with more. And, I think uh, that, uh, kind of how I think about it is it's kind of like the, it's almost like the beginning of the journey is the 1000 <laughs> subscribers. Yeah. It's like, okay, now I've done enough where I've mastered the basics of yeah. this and I can start actually doing, you know, doing well, uh, real things with it. <laughs> yeah. It opens up other avenues, you know, so you have other options. Yeah. You get way more opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially with the other features they let you add in and stuff like the community post, you know, the, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can stay in touch with your community uh, just through a, a written post without creating a video to share with them. And you can do polls, you know, you can run whatever, you know, you can just stay in touch with them a lot better. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Are those all the stickers from the, uh, the yeah, I've got people? just got started. I don't have, uh, I don't I've got a couple more I need to put on there, but yeah, I've just started trying to do a little sticker swapping with people that, you know, barbecue community and cooking community, they have stickers. This is a blowed up one of mine. I have a, it's an actual, the actual size is, like that. It's got my old ugly mug in there in the skillet, old skillet head. <laughs> but it has my channel name, Mr. Cast Iron, where everything's better in cast iron is my slogan. Tagline, I guess. Teresa blew this up where we could show it on screen, you know. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's just one way of everybody sharing what they have with each other and so Where do you get your stickers done? Stickermule.com. Yep. I just used uh, U printing, which was pretty good. I used to use, I used to um, run an online cookie and brownie business for a nonprofit, and we used to get all our nutrition labels from them. Yeah. Um, and it's it's cheap, but the shipping is killer. Right, but it's kind of killer on everything right now. Even like this yeah. print, or whatever. I gotta check out a uh, sticker mule though, because yeah. yeah, I'm always looking for a good deal. Because I'm gonna use the stickers to um, at like the farmers market to like close up the boxes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and they uh, they sent me a bottle of uh, hot sauce with my order. Ah. That's interesting. Yeah. It was cool. How was the hot sauce? It was pretty good. Did you put it in the chili? No, but I have sprinkled it on some eggs. Yeah. Seems like over easy would be a little bit difficult in a cast iron skillet. No? No. Maybe. No? You just got to make sure you got all that grease, that bacon grease right there. Got to have it. <laughs> Gotta have it. <laughs> Where do you put your eggs on? Just toast or something else? Uh, no. Well, yeah, I, I like toast with with my over easy eggs. Now I cook a lot of scrambled eggs too, and uh, take that helps pepper. clean it though, right? Huh? That helps clean it. The eggs always soak up everything on the pan. Yeah, I cook a lot on my. Uh, Grill griddle. I like you know that. what yeah, I saw that was really interesting for cleaning um, griddles was uh, radishes. Yeah. That was cool. 
It really gets, it soaks everything up. I mean, they're mostly water. They're like 80% water. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you can take potatoes too and cut them in half and do something like that. But yeah, I like, I like making breakfast. I like uh, tortillas. I like breakfast burritos a lot. But then again, you're back to white cheese. flour with a uh, sprinkle cheese. Absolutely. <laughs> you got to have sprinkle cheese in there and your salsa. Do you make your own salsas? I used to make some, uh, but then again, I'm back to not raising my own tomatoes and peppers and stuff, so I don't. I actually started making them out of uh, canned tomatoes and stuff yeah. like that because I um, really did the math and it was like like a quarter of the price, maybe yeah. less than a quarter, and you got like a gallon. Like we'll put we'll put it's like a pico de gallo more. So well, gonna... I was getting ready to say that I make pico. I like pico. I got a video about that. Matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> am I selling it yet? Am I selling myself or no? But yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I love pico de gallo. I love homemade guacamole too. Mm. Yeah, that was one of my first videos. You could really tell it's one of my first videos, but that's actually one of the, not the editing. The editing is good because my friend uh, that I was flying with, Lara, she um, she edited for me. She went to school for like film and everything. Cool. And so it's edited pretty cool. But like, you know, me talking and stuff, you're like, oh, you're new at this. Yeah. <laughs> the lighting and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of videos I have like that. So I feel like once I got to uh, the focaccia video I did, I got um, some new like lights for the videos and it made such a big difference. Like a huge difference. Like you watch that video and you watch the one before it and you think they're like 10 years apart. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Amazing. That's a great thing about it. You know, you keep all them older videos up when you first start and everything. You can kind of see, you know, the progression, hopefully. What's your favorite video that you've done? Uh, it's a non-cooking video, actually. Uh, and it's rather long. It's a little over 30 minutes long. But I, uh, I found my son after 35 years, he was adopted out before I was aware that she was even pregnant and we had split up anyway. And, uh, she never told me until it was too late and he was adopted out and it took me 35 years to find him. And so I've got that documented in a video where we, uh, showed us leaving here in Arkansas, driving to Iowa to meet him and initially meeting him. And, uh, I'll tell my whole story, a whole life story of, uh, from from 1984 up until 2019. Holy crap. Yeah. That was not the answer that I thought you were going to say. Yeah, I knew that would probably blow your mind there. But, yeah, you need to go watch that if you've never mm -hmm. seen that video. It's uh, it's uh, it's pretty amazing. But is it's it on truth. Mr. Cass Iron? Or yeah, I've it? got it on there. All right. Well, we're definitely going to put the link straight to that video in the description. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. It's pretty cool. It's called, uh, the title of the video is uh, You Are My Answered Prayer. So, so you did you, it. you still, after meeting him, you still keep in contact with him? And oh, everything? yeah. 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 We still, we talk some, we text some, we interact on Facebook a little. And, but yeah, it's pretty wild. That's wild. Of course, COVID, you know, we have not, we met initially met with him spent a couple of days up there and uh, but covid once covid hit you know it's really just put a damper on everything we were going to do kind of like a family reunion uh last october and we had to cancel all of that right. you know everything was shut down yeah so we're still trying to uh you know, negotiate something. We're going to try to coordinate something soon, hopefully. Are they still, but, um, is everything pretty much still shut down over there? 
Uh, not quite like it was back then, but yeah, there's still a lot of restrictions. Well, you can always come to Florida. It's like the wild west here. Anything yeah. else? <laughs> yeah. Probably they're, wild here in the west, actually. They're trying to open it up a little bit more. I think our governor's trying to get it to where you're not, uh, not necessarily having to wear as, the mask as much. Or I mean, it's really your choice, but right now it's pretty much mandatory when you go in most stores. I mean, I think that's important because if, you know, you got to stop the spread. But, you know, I think also once people start getting vaccinated, people are going to be like, oh, well, I was vaccinated and they weren't really vaccinated. They just don't want to wear a mask and then they get everybody sick. And it's just kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's not like I have a mask tan. I'm rocking my mask tan right now. I got a line yeah. up here from the farmer's market. And yeah. even though, you know, I already, ha I probably already had it. I probably have immunity, but I'm going to wear it anyway because mm. it's, it has nothing to do with, you know, it's your duty to your fellow American. It's not, yeah. it, you know, just the small chance that you could affect someone else's life and, you know, your wife has blood clots in her lungs. Like, yeah, yeah. it's it serious. I mean, mask, some could people be, could have avoided it, you know? Right. It, it's a serious thing. And some people, they it doesn't affect very much. I've had friends that, you know, so it was just like a sinus issue. Yeah, my boyfriend was sick for like a day. Yeah. Fine. And then we've had people that's actually passed away from it. You know, exactly. So that's who you're wearing the that, mask for. That we you know, know personally. I mean, this is not just someone we know of, someone of someone we know. No, <clears throat> excuse me. We we know of at least three people that personally that's passed away from it, from the effects of it. And, of course, when she uh, wasn't ever getting over the cough and everything and uh, went back to the doctor, that was just fear. You know, he said, Tracy, you need to go have a CT uh, a CAT scan right now on this check, and sure enough, she, she had blood clots in her lungs, and that was a lot of the problem causing for the coughing. So they put her immediately on blood thinners, and you know she's she's better, but she's not out of the woods yet. I mean, she's 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 got a ways to go yet. Yeah, and that, so. it's scary too because you don't know. Nobody really knows if there's long term effects either with that. Yeah. You know. Like, well, I, I mean, in my own experience, I, I still battle fatigue. Fatigue was one of the uh, symptoms. Uh, I don't have the headaches or anything. And I, I, re I regained my taste and smell. I lost that. Uh, it's not good for a cooking channel. <laughs> no. But the, fa the fatigue, I mean, I still, I still have issues with that. I just don't have the energy I used to. And a lot of people that, you know, a lot of people that I've talked to that's had it, that had, you know, many of the symptoms and severe, a lot of them say the same thing. They're still struggling with the fatigue. I mean, when I came home from Thailand, the thing about being a flight attendant is like you're always fatigued mm -hmm. because the time zone changes are just so hard on your body. Um, especially when you do long haul, cause you're going like, you know, five to, you know, nine hours in time zone differences all right. the time. Um, so for a while I wasn't sure if I was just tired because I still wasn't used to not being a flight attendant, you know, or if it was from like COVID or whatever, but I feel the same way. And, um, you know, some days I'm just like, like lethargic like you don't yeah. you just feel like yeah, i can't do anything i'm too tired yeah and you're like well why am i so tired but uh you know from being a flight attendant i just learned you have to listen to your body and if you got to sleep more you got to sleep more that's it yeah yeah well and we're you know we're a little bit older i mean we're i'm 57 Teresa's 54 today so happy birthday <laughs> Oh, know. you gotta go celebrate! You're yeah, I'm gonna have to. I heard her come in a while ago. I'll probably have to do something here in a little bit, but I don't know if she can hear you or not. But I've got my headset on my microphone, so I don't guess she can. But yeah, you know, age 
has a little to do with it because some of the younger, like our uh, my stepson, or her son, they developed it, and he had some major issues that affected him, but then he got over it fairly quick. So, you know, I don't know if age has a lot to do with it. I guess it does, but. I don't know. I've seen, like heard people that are like bodybuilders and, you know, work out a lot and they, they'll feel fine. And then um, like a friend of a friend, he was, you know, worked out all the time, ran all the time, was got sick, felt fine. And then like a month later, woke up, he couldn't breathe and he had the blood clots in his lungs. Yeah. Even though he felt fine. Yeah, that's. Uh, I know men do get it too, but he told uh, the doctor told us that uh, primarily it's women that get to, that develop the blood clots, but some men do. You well, know, women but, in general are more at risk for blood clots anyway, um, just because you know the the things we have to do, <laughs> like yeah. bear children and all that yeah. other stuff. Yeah. So they even. My mom's actually a women's health professional, so that's definitely one of the things she talks about a lot. Yeah. You know, especially when, when you're on a plane and stuff, you got to think about like deep vein thrombosis and stuff like that in your legs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, or being on birth wow. control and smoking and all that other stuff increases your risk as a woman. Yeah. Who knows? You get a. I keep telling my mom she's got to do a uh, like a show about like nursing on youtube like women's health and that kind of thing but maybe uh if i mention it enough on this channel she'll start one <laughs> yeah. it would probably be pretty popular yeah i keep telling her that yeah yeah especially she has a thick jersey accent so it's all right. very, it's okay. very entertaining <laughs> yeah well listen to me i'm just an old country boy you know i mean i've got i know i have an accent so, so they say i think everybody else has an accent myself but you know that's what uh i remember when i was a kid i went to visit my cousins in scotland and i was like i didn't understand that joke i was like <laughs> No, you have an accent. And they're like, no, you have an accent. I, yeah. You're in school and you have an accent. And I was yeah. like, no, you have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you definitely have an accent. Is it, can you tell all the Southern ac accents apart pretty well? Uh, some, yeah. Louisiana is really a, a strong draw. Texas people, Arkansas people, Southern Missouri, they're all about the same. What about yeah. Alabama? Uh, that's a little different slang, yeah. They've yeah. got their own twang to it. You know, Georgia people do too. Huh. Yeah. North Carolina, they've got a different twang. But oh, My friend is from North Carolina. I talk to him like every day and uh, – he sounds totally different than you, actually. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's really interesting. West Virginia, that's different. But it's all good. That's a great thing about America, you know. It's a melting Accents. pot. Yeah, <laughs> Accents. And food, the diversity of food, you know. Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things I like about having a show where you talk about food is like, you really see that you might have different politics or different beliefs or whatever, but it shows the, you know, the humanity, the uniting yeah. factor, you know? Yeah. That's one thing I don't, uh, I don't allow. I don't really touch uh, politics and religion on my interviews. Uh, now if somebody I'm going has to politics a little bit because I think food is, it's food politics, usually. Right. You know? now, yeah, if it's specific to something. Just like the other night, I had a gentleman that had a strong faith. I got a strong faith, you know, but I, I'm, I'm trying to interview cooks and things like that. But he, he, he has a ministry in his uh, cooking channel, and so we, we talked about it. But huh. I try to steer away from politics. Well, religion is... An interesting one that he's got a ministry for his cooking channel. That's yeah. actually a lot, probably a lot of people would uh, do well with that because well, there's he, so many he, food restrictions in religion. Yeah. 
Yeah, him and his wife do a like a motivational type video every Monday, but they do oh. a lot of cooking. And then he actually has a food truck. And uh, so it's interesting. Sermons just, in service, huh? There you go. That's it. Hey, I like that. That's good. Yeah, you can have that one. <laughs> I'm not really. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> I'm, I may. I may pass that on to Brandon. You know. All right. Service and uh, sermons and service, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's good. I got to get going, but uh, and you should have to get going. You got a birthday celebration over there. Yeah. No telling what we'll get into here in a little bit. Not a lot since we're in our. Sorry, cast iron birthday cake recipe. <laughs> I don't know. She's. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do just yet. We'll have to see. But anyway, we certainly appreciate you having us on, though, and uh, enjoyed it. And I look forward to hopefully interviewing you someday. I'll shoot you uh, some some dates. And maybe we can nail something down. What do you think about that? That'd be awesome. Be nice to travel travel on over to another channel. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Be the, be the interviewee for, yeah. for once. That'd be great. Yeah. Be on the other side of the mic. Huh? Yeah. Love it. Well, good deal. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching and uh, check out the links below. I'm going to definitely go watch that uh, documentary basically about you meeting your son. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll probably look at a couple more cast iron videos because yeah. I'm learning a lot from your channel. Um, I appreciate that. It's a really great channel. Yeah. Um, and also check out his uh, live videos because they're a lot of fun. And you really, if you're looking for a community like to be a part of, you know, very welcoming. And you really get in there with the comments and yeah. talking to Karen and <laughs> yeah. everyone. It's a, it's a good time. So. Yeah. That's called Weekends with Mr. Cast Iron, by the way. So, yeah, appreciate Weekends it. Weekends with Mr. Cast Iron.